see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wildflower. Hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. So begins William Blake's wonderful poem, Auguries of Innocence. And these four lines capture the essence of flash fiction, or in our case, flash nonfiction, a type of literature that is becoming increasingly popular um, in the publishing world. Um, I myself have spent the last five years or so writing flash fiction, um, and in fact, my most recent book called Polaris Ghost uh, is really a collection of flash fiction along with prose poetry. And we'll see rather quickly that, that a lot of the qualities of flash nonfiction and prose poetry are the same, and in some cases it's hard really to distinguish between the two. So let me tell you a little bit about flash fiction slash flash nonfiction. It's really been around for a long time, even though it's blossomed since the 1980s. There are very ancient precedents for flash fiction, flash nonfiction. One that comes to mind most prominently would, of course, be uh, the Japanese poetic form haiku, a, a very brief poem that captures the resonance of, of a particular moment, highly microscopic, intensified verse form. The most famous haiku poet, perhaps, Japanese poet Basho, who flourished in the 17th century, uh, here is one of his more famous haiku. It goes like this. In Kyoto, hearing the cuckoo, I long for Kyoto. It really seems silly to try to interpret such a moment as that. It is just a moment. It is there, it is present, and it resonates. The aphorism also is a precedent. The aphorism is a brief, often one sentence, uh, clever rendering of complicated idea or feeling, often with the use of, of paradox or irony. One of the most famous aphorisms comes from um, a, a French mystic, Blase Pascal, and it goes like this. The heart has reasons of which reason knows nothing. The heart has reasons of which reason knows nothing. So this play on reason, uh, having two different meanings at, at least, is what, what drives this aphorism. It's a highly condensed form uh, where the writer compresses almost as much meaning as possible into a very small space. The fairy tale is a precedent to flash fiction, nonfiction. Some of the Grimm's fairy tales are very brief in this regard. So there are ancient precedents. Ancient's not the right word. There are precedents that come that have been around for hundreds of years for um, flash fiction, nonfiction. There are several different kinds of flash fiction, nonfiction that um, exist now. Uh, you can find them in journals like Smoke Long Quarterly. Uh, you can find them in journals like uh, Brevity, which are devoted to these brief forms. Uh, one form of flash fiction, nonfiction, is the, the six-word story uh, based on a, a famous moment, perhaps by Ernest Hemingway, perhaps not. No one really knows where this little, little moment comes from. Uh, it's often attributed to Hemingway. Um, for sale baby shoes never worn. So you see how that works? What do you, what do you have there? You have uh, a narrative in place, a plot is suggested by those six words, a beginning and a middle and an end. Uh, quite, quite remarkable. And there are people still trying to write these six word stories to mimic this, this story that was allegedly by Hemingway. There are other uh, Twitterature, 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 which is a narrative of 140 characters, which used to be the number of characters allowed by a tweet. Now I think 280 characters are allowed. But, but the idea that you can write a story in 140 or 280 characters, this should be especially amenable to your generation 
you've probably been doing flash tweets without even knowing it for, for years now. Texting too is conducive to brevity. So you've really been trained uh, in, in, in packing a lot of meaning into a small space, I would say. What are some other forms of flash fiction, nonfiction? The so-called drabble, which is a, a 100 word story. And there is a journal, I think, simply called 100 Words, and it is devoted to 100 word flash, non flash fiction. Uh, th this comes from a, a, a Monty Python skit. Monty Python, the great surrealistic comic troupe of the 60s and 70s. Um, one of the skits featured the big red book uh, and a contest, who can write a novel the fastest? <laughs> and this became the basis for other literary groups coming up with an idea that you could write a, a novel in a hundred words, it would be a drabble. And half of a drabble is a dribble, which uh, would be a 50 word narrative. Most flash fiction, nonfiction um, falls between 500 and, and 1000 words. I think that's a fairly comfortable comfortable length. So what, what do we want to achieve in writing flash nonfiction? Um, well, I think first of all, of all, we want to achieve compression. We, we want to give a sense to the reader that in this small space, there are layers and complexities and subtleties and nuances that are brimming below the surface. And so this compression is inseparable from intensification. Every word must do its job. So in this regard, the flash narrative is like poetry, where there are no wasted words. Every word must carry a particular weight in terms of sound or meaning. I think too that the, the, because of the, con, con, the compression and the intensification, another quality of, of the flash narrative is, is ambiguity, a startling um, ambiguity, a sort of lingering mystery. And we saw that I think in several of the um, flash pieces we read for today. Uh, in particular, um, let me refresh my memory here, we did the Terry Tempest Williams um, an Unspoken Hunger, very brief, uh, very odd, we'll look at it in a minute. And of course, in the beginning of the semester, we read Stuart Dybeck's um, Lights, another extremely brief uh, story that is um, irreducibly strange. Uh, some other shorter pieces we read for today would be Joy Harjo Suspended and um, Simic's Three Fragments, Levertov's Inheritance. Overt meaning is not really conducive to the power of the flash. You want to be very careful not to tie your narrative off with one of those chestnut final sentences which gives the reader a sense of, oh, this is what it means. I think the flash wants to be more than mean. Often we have a tendency in our narratives, our longer ones, to, to give the feeling of na, 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 that kind of nice, closing line, closure even we might call it, that gives the reader a sense of, okay, this is now done and this is what it means. Whereas in the flash, you want more of a feeling of nah, 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 right? And so that just leaves that empty space at the end. The reader's left to fill in that empty space him or herself. So in this regard, the compression, the intensification, the, the startling ambiguity, um, all of these effects are, are generated by a paradox, and that is the absences must become present. That the real power of the flash is what is not there on the surface, but what lurks below, as it were. So you know that you can't present the entire narrative. You suggest the entire narrative through a fragment or a beginning or a middle or an end. So, so vast absences are suggested by the presence. You want to include by omission would be another way to put this. So here's some advice for actually writing a piece of flash. Obviously there are no set rules, um, but you might find this helpful. So um, I would say always focus on a moment. Just a very particular moment should be your, your, your starting point. And I would begin not at the beginning of the, the moment or the end of the moment, but the middle of the moment. So like throw readers right there in, in the middle. So, so the opening should not really be a traditional opening. It should throw readers right in. 
And the conclusion should not be a typical conclusion. It should be open-ended. And it should point readers to a kind of emptiness or absence that they must fill in themselves. As you saw in what you read for today, the, the, the flash really is dependent upon very striking, vivid imagery. Images that do most of the work without your telling the reader what the images actually mean. Uh, so again, you just have to trust, uh, you have to trust that what is not there will be present. So one way I like to do a non write a narrative um, um, flat flash narrative is I like to start with with more than I'm going to end with. If I'm going to write a 500 word piece, I'll start with a thousand words say and cut it down, and and get the joy of cutting, of condensing, of pressing. Um, every time you cut a sentence that doesn't carry your meaning as you want it to, there's a there's a joy in that. And believe me. The joy of cutting, the joy of compressing, the joy of making leanness and cleanness and clarity. Uh, so, you wrote a 100 word flash nonfiction for this week. I'll go ahead and tell you your assignment for next week will be cut that in half and make it 50 words and see what you can do with that. Well, I've gone over time a little bit. I was going to read the Terry Tempest Williams um, flash hunger. I, I don't have time now. Uh, you've already read it. Read it again in light of what I've talked about, and you'll see how it functions as an exemplary piece of flash narrative.